Hello my soccer universe and welcome to my roundup of the midweek league action which is mostly Premier League but I will tag on a little bit of Greece at the end. Uh, I have to say I mostly saw highlights, I only saw one match live and that was yesterday's um, Wolves-Liverpool match which actually was a good one but there were quite a few talking points but I have to say if I look at the Premier League this year uh, Beside everyone but Liverpool kind of stumbling and you know no one really going really places you more wonder of oh, there are so many bad teams and they're still towards the top of the table. That is one part of uh, the Premier League, but I think the one thing that really takes over it because it bleeds a little bit into the Euros is injuries, especially to England strikers, are becoming a concern. And we had already the Harry Kane injury where we don't know if he will come back. Then just before this round, I got aware that Rashford is now out and injured. We, of course, have Pogba uh, out, I think, took an operation. And we'll have another injury that potentially could affect England. And you wonder, are they still not the favorites as all the bookies have them? I never saw England as favorites at those Euros, to be honest. But... You saw in my first video that I made predicting the Euros are going through the groups. I suddenly had England come out as, as a winner where I thought I'm, yeah, let's do something fancy and not going by the book. And then I see that England are actually favorites. But yeah, that's kind of one of the main stories. But let's walk through the games. Uh, Bournemouth gets a big win over Brighton 3-1. That was sorely needed. Um, I'm wearing Newcastle because they were part of probably the craziest game of the weekend where Everton had a 2-0 lead uh, with Moise Kane finally scoring, you know, Italian manager, Italian players doing well. I was actually quite happy for him, probably would have been more happy for them uh, if they would uh, edge out a win and they were looking good until the 93rd and then Newcastle scores twice. Yes, I'm more Newcastle than Everton uh, to be honest, but you know, I like Angelotti and I want that Moise Kane is also succeeding. So yeah, uh, the first goal by Newcastle was a um, bicycle kick and the second one was just pure mayhem where Pickford then uh, saves it behind the line. I have to say, uh, Newcastle is one of the craziest teams this season. I mean, they score late winners, they have a lot of goals by defenders at the uh, tour towards the end. Everton even gives, is also, in, in addition, the team that gives up the most late goals. So yeah, and in addition, Newcastle is performing expected goals by a lot. But yeah, they get another vital points and are uh, are doing much better than expected. Um, Sheffield United, Manchester City. Um, yes, City gets the win uh, through Aguero. Nice pass again by uh, De Bruyne, but it should have been not even that, that close uh, with Gabriel Jesus missing a penalty again. I think City has probably the worst collection of penalty takers uh, any good team in Europe. Crystal Palace, Southampton. Southampton, yes, they fell to Wolves, but they are really moving up. They had on a great run and now they win at Palace. Um, also, rather deserved 2-0. They get going. Um, in a relegation uh, match, Aston Villa, Watford, that was a vital win for Villa. I thought from the highlights I could get that Watford actually had a little bit more of the game, but in the end, Villa gets the late win. And then the big match on Tuesday was, of course, Chelsea-Arsenal, where it should have been a Chelsea win if you look at all the circumstances. We had... First of all, a penalty for Chelsea given and because David Luiz made the foul and he's sent off. At that point, everything points towards Chelsea. Of course, Jorginho uh, hoppity hop makes his um, goal. This time the goalkeeper was there. But then in the second half, Kante, it was a, I think it was a corner uh, from of Chelsea and Arsenal is going on, on the counter and, Ar and Kante is slipping. And Martinelli can run through and goal and makes it 1-1. Kind of surprising. Then uh, Aspilicueta in the 84th gets Chelsea back in the lead. And you're thinking, now they've done it. No. Pellerin comes back from injury and scores. Wednesday's game were kind of... Yeah, I was nothing really exciting there. Spurs against uh, Norwich. Spurs scores their first goal uh, this season. In the first half, but are not convincing. Uh, Dele Alli got that goal, which was uh, really weird. I mean, he just 
Uh, it was the second one, but yeah, uh, that uh, where I was just need, needed to head, head in. But yeah, Dele Ali gets the first goal. Norwich actually with a really good performance. Um, Puki converts a penalty in the 70th to make it 1 1. And you know, I would have been happy if they finally get points again, but no, uh, uh Young Ming Son can head in from a short distance, give Spurs a much, much needed win. Uh, it was even more vital because now they can draw level with Manchester United, who managed to lose at home to Burnley 2-0. I hear so many podcasts and so many people talking about Manchester United that I'm actually sick of it because, uh, yes, they have this check and hide face where against good teams they can play well but still lose, although at Liverpool they were not playing all of it. Liverpool was clearly the better team. And then at lesser teams they uh, also managed to lose and Burnley gets their first win as far as I know at Old Trafford. The second goal um, was a really nice one. One that you should make an effort to see by Rodriguez. That was a really great one. And then, um, so, that was pro probably the biggest result. I actually really like those Burnley away jerseys. I have to say smart, look quite good. And then the big game was, of course, Wolves against Liv Liverpool, where, yeah, <laughs> the first half encapsulated the season with Liverpool being absolutely ruthless. First shot on goal, first goal. Uh, Henderson after corner. Wolves then get a free kick, where again, uh, they get a free header. It wouldn't have had, not have even been an offside, but they cannot get it, get it a goal. And that's basically a huge difference. In the second half, um, Adama takes more or less over, but in a way, uh, makes himself struggle. I mean, uh, if he uses more pace, no one is stopping him, but he is uh, playing the ball. Anyway, he was very much involved in the equalizer for Wolves, a well-deserved equalizer at that point, where um, the ball is played out by Jimenez to Adama, who puts the cross in, and then uh, they head, head, head it home and make it 1-1. At that point already... Um, we had an injury to Mane, who was replaced by Minamino, which kind of made a little bit trouble for Liverpool. I think uh, they then had only two on front, and that made it really hard for them to adjust. And I really thought that uh, Wolves would deserve a point. And a, there was a point in time when I thought they were actually closer to winning it. Um, however, you never should count out Liverpool. And I was actually riveted to the TV. Uh, because I just wanted to see this was an exciting game. Will Liverpool again drop points after they haven't done it since uh, ages at Old at, at Trafford? No, they don't drop. It was a throw-in. Ball gets to Salah, who kind of keeps it away. I mean, Salah... I, 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 I understand if people say he's frustrating, but yeah, he tries to keep the ball, then uh, it goes back to Henderson, who plays it through to Firmino, who can slot it home. It's 2-1 Liverpool. And I just realized I forgot one Wednesday game. The, actually, the one that I saw a little bit between Leicester City and West Ham. Where Leicester actually had not much trouble. However, the biggest trouble was, and that was the injury I was talking about, that um, their uh, big striker... Why is the name now not coming when I really need it? Um, Vardy, of course. Stupid me. Uh, got an injury, and I don't know what's his status, but he went out. It was 2 0 Leicester City, relatively easy um, at in the first half. Um, then uh, West Ham gets a penalty. Looks much closer, but Ayose Perez uh, with a penalty and another nice goal late in the game makes it a convincing 4 1 win. So if you look at the table now, we have Liverpool. Flying game in hand, it's next week against uh, West Ham United City. Sits in second, three points ahead of Leicester, who also are kind of with a cushion. Uh, maybe they overcame, came out their week period where they lost two games in a row. Chelsea in fourth, also with a cushion. I, it seems that Chelsea is very vulnerable at the moment, but no one can take care of it. Manchester United loses. Spurs has been losing, now gets in there. I think Wolves might be the most uh, dangerous team, uh, potentially catching uh, and going in, in, into the top four, but it's still a, a big run. I mean, six points. It can happen. Sheffield United is also there. Southampton moves in the top half of the table. Arsenal stays steady. Um, and then, yeah, Everton is another team that's disappointing. Newcastle, despite getting this draw, is also dropping a place because Burnley was winning. And on the bottom of the table, yeah, Bournemouth got a big win. Um, Aston Villa gets itself, I don't want to say out, out of trouble, but it puts West Ham into trouble. And West Ham 
really doesn't look good. Watford uh, is also, uh, they have been good now, they're going down again. Norwich, I think, will go down. So that was the Premier League, and let's very brief, briefly talk about Greece, where uh, in the uh, results we still have the title race on. Olympiakos getting a narrow one win, nil win at OFI, and uh, Pauk winning narrowly at Lamia. Um, Panathinaikos getting in shape and getting good form, 3 nil over Atromitos, and also Ike wins at Volos and Aris Xanti ends 1 nil. So those are kind of the results. And we have the top four uh, also on top of the table with Olympiakos now three points ahead of Pauk. Although I'm not sure if that, maybe that's all right. Uh, Ike 10 points behind and Panathinaikos third, 31. But the big talking point in Greece, and I'm not an insider on Greek football, I actually wish I, could, I would get more news because uh, that's a league that's, you know, is big enough to be worthy of covering, but it's also so messy with the warlike state and they had a meeting between the big, uh, the four, big four bosses and UEFA officials to kind of, can we, how can we solve the really messy situation in Greece. Many people even thinking that the meeting will not come to anything, which I thought so too. But one th point for now is that they made another meeting and that they agreed to have uh, more foreign referees. And yeah, people are talking. And at least if people get to talk, maybe they can get something going. So there is hope that Greece will maybe have some normal circumstances, although Knowing the Balkan Peninsula not being an inside in Greece, but you know, everything to the southeast of Austria, it's hot there. It's really hot there and tempers flare quickly. So, uh, interesting situation for sure. Anyway, let me know what you watched uh, this past weekend. Let, let me know, ah, this past week. Uh, let, let me know if you agree with my assessment of the games. As I said, I only saw really the Liverpool game live, the rest was all. Uh, my impressions from highlights and also what I read and see. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye! Thank you.